Hello everybody, it's Tuesday and that means it's time for a new episode of Draw This. In this episode, we're going to be drawing a candle. I'm here inside of Corel Painter 2015. I have an 11 by 14 inch canvas at 300 dpi and I've got some layers created here for my candle. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and fill my canvas layer with black. I'm going to select black and then click on the fill shortcut because if we want our candle to glow, we have to have a dark background. So I'm going to go to my sketch layer now. My sketch layer is set to screen for the composite method. That way I can sketch with a light color on top of a dark background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and sketch in kind of a rough cylindrical shape. It's up to you if you want your candle to be melting or not. Something like that will work. And we'll go ahead and indicate where we want our wick to be, maybe somewhere like that. And we'll indicate our flame. Maybe that'll be something like that. And if you want to go ahead and reposition this, you can go ahead and use the move tool to scoot it down because I think I want my candle to be less dominant than the flame. I want to balance this out a little more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that detail oil to just go ahead and extend that flame a little bit higher. And I think that looks better. Now we can go ahead and elaborate on our cylindrical shape a little bit more and give it some lumps. If this candle's melting, it might have some drips and things. So we want to go ahead and sketch those in. We put some little ridges and contours into our candle here. This is just a rough sketch that we're going to use as a foundation for our painting. Now if you want to, you can use Free Transform to manipulate this in some different ways. If you want to squish it or squash it, you can also rotate it if it's a little crooked. Mine feels a little crooked, so I'm going to rotate it a little bit so it feels a little more upright. And then we'll go ahead and dim the opacity of that sketch just to make it a little more transparent and we can go ahead and start filling in these layers now and just blocking them in. The easiest layer to start with will be the candle layer, so I'll go ahead and jump to that layer. I'm gonna use the scratch board tool, make sure it's set to 100% opacity so that we can go ahead and fill this in nice and thick. I'm gonna go ahead and start with kind of a medium orange color here. I'm just going to paint right along the edges of this shape. I'm not going to worry about making it super perfect because I can go ahead and clean up that edge however I like. So I've got a nice closed shape here with no holes in it. That means I can use the paint bucket to go ahead and just fill it in nice and quick. Now you can use the eraser if you like, or you can use the pinch brush, which will go ahead and pinch the shape. I'm going to temporarily hide this sketch by clicking on the eyeball so that you can see what I'm doing here. When I paint with this, if I paint back and forth along this line, it can smooth it out or I can pull it into the shape that I want. So I'm going to smooth this out a little bit with nice long strokes right here along the sides. You can also push and pull the paint around using the Distorto brush. Maybe I want to push this up like that, push this up like that, and flatten this out. You can pull out some more wax here from the side. So I think that will work for the basic shape of our candle. Let's go ahead and go to our wick layer. And let's select the scratch board tool again. Since the wick's going to be kind of dark, we won't be able to see it on the black. So let's just pick a temporary color for our wick. It could really be any color. Let's just say that's going to be this blue color here so that it stands out. I'm just going to draw on the wick. And then let's go to the flame layer. And let's go ahead and just select white. And we'll go ahead and paint on our flame. If you want to turn your sketch back on, you can do that. All right, so we don't need our sketch anymore. We can go ahead and delete that. And now we have our basic outlines for our shapes. Now, of course, we're gonna have to do a lot more work to this to get it to look like a realistic candle. So we'll start adding some form to these shapes to make them look three-dimensional. So let's go ahead and return to the wick layer. Let's turn on preserve transparency. That'll keep us from painting outside of that blue shape. Let's go ahead and pick kind of a warm, really dark gray. And we'll select the scratch board and just paint over that wick. Let's go ahead and go to the candle layer and we'll start adding some form to that. I think this orange color is okay. If you don't like the orange color, you can change it to any other color you like. But what we're going to have is a gradient that goes from yellow all the way down to kind of red towards the bottom and then fades out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a nice bright yellow color and I'm going to select the airbrush. Make the airbrush pretty big. That way you'll get a nice smooth transition. And I'm going to use firm pressure towards the top and then lighter pressure as I move down. That way I get this nice smooth transition. I'm going to select a brighter orange, put some of that in. And a bright red, put some of that in. 
and a darker red. I want it just to fade out into nothing. And if you really want to fade it without having to really worry about messing anything up, what you can do is you can go ahead and turn off Preserve Transparency, and you can add a layer mask to that candle layer. And if you paint with black, make sure you have black and the airbrush, then you can kind of temporarily erase. And if you paint too much and you erase too much, you can always select white and that'll bring it back. But I'm gonna keep painting with black here so that I can just kind of fade this up like so and not have to worry about selecting a bunch of different colors to get that nice transition there. What it's doing is it's making it transparent anywhere I paint with black inside of that mask. So it's effectively erasing it, but it's not really erasing it permanently. I think we're done with the mask, so let's go ahead and just right click on it and let's choose apply layer mask and that applies that masking. So now these pixels are permanently gone. Let's turn on preserve transparency. Let's keep working on this a little bit. I think I want it to be a little bit brighter, so I'm gonna bring in the airbrush and I'm gonna use a smaller brush to go in here and start indicating some other shapes, like the foreground of this candle shape here. I even start to emphasize a few drips along the side like that. You're building up the three-dimensional form now when you're adding these lighter and darker colors. I'm gonna go ahead and select a lighter yellow Brighten it a little bit and add some really bright highlights up here. This is going to start to help it look like wax if you add these really sharp highlights to it. You want to think about where the light source is. The main light source is the candle, so you want all of your really bright highlights to face towards that. You can select an almost white, put that in in a few places. And then on some of these edges, you want to go around these edges and lighten them a little bit. Next, let's add some darker colors to this to create some shadows. And just so we don't mess anything up because this is looking pretty nice, let's add those on their own layer. So let's get a selection from the candle layer. Let's choose Select Layer Content, and then Show Hide Selection, which will just hide the selection while keeping it active. And if we create a new layer, we call it Shadows, anything that we paint is going to stay within that selection, but it'll still be on its own layer. So we can turn off Preserve Transparency, we can change the composite method to multiply. We usually do that for shadows and dark areas. And we'll go ahead and use the airbrush. We'll hold Alt and we'll sample one of these dark reds down here towards the bottom. And we can go ahead and paint in some shadow areas using the airbrush. Now these shadows are on their own layer now. You won't be able to paint anywhere outside of this candle area with that selection active. See how adding all these nice ridges really starts to make it look nice and melted and contoured? I'm going to sample one of these brighter oranges and put in some more shadows here and there. We can do the same thing with lighter colors too. We can create a new layer and we can call it highlights. Since this is going to be a light layer, let's make the composite method screen. We'll go ahead and sample one of these light yellows. Let's put in some bright areas. And you can really go back and forth all you want with the shadows. Just to make this look however you want it to look. Another neat trick is to use the distortion brushes like Pinch, Bulge, and Distort to manipulate this candle shape. I'm going to try Pinch. That'll kind of pull things together and tighten up some of this detail. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good for our highlights, shadows, and midtones. Let's go ahead and hold Shift and click on the candle layer. That makes a selection of all three layers. And we'll hit Control E to go ahead and merge those layers together. And then last but not least, let's make sure that we select none to go ahead and clear or deactivate that selection. That way we can paint outside of it. Let's go ahead and do some work on the flame now. Let's go to the flame layer and let's change it to a screen composite method. Let's select a bright orange color and we'll select the airbrush and we'll turn on preserve transparency and we'll go ahead and paint along the edges here just to kind of Make this look a little more like a flame. We want it to be really bright white in the center, and then we want it to have some different colored edges here. Let's select a bright yellow, add a little bit of that. We'll go with an even brighter yellow and add in some of that. And then we'll select blue, 
put in some blue here near the base and like a really bright red orange and then we'll go back to white and we'll go ahead and paint in the center there to go ahead and bring back some more of that brightness now it's going to look a little strange for now but don't worry we'll do more work on it let's go to the wick layer and let's go ahead and add some detail to that so we'll just sample some of these orange colors from within our candle we use the airbrush with a thin airbrush, we'll just add some detail to our wick. It's a three-dimensional cylinder, so we want to shade it appropriately. Just sampling the colors that are around it and adding them in. And then let's turn off Preserve Transparency and let's add a mask to the wick layer. Let's select black and we'll use the airbrush to go ahead and fade this wick into the candle. And then we'll just go ahead and apply that layer mask by right clicking on it and choosing apply layer mask. Let's go back to the flame, turn on preserve transparency again. We'll select white and we'll use the airbrush. Just go ahead and paint a little more over that area there. And maybe we'll add a little more yellow here at the bottom. That'll work for our basic flame shape for now. Let's go ahead and turn off preserve transparency. And then on that flames layer, we'll choose effects, focus, motion blur, and make sure preview's on. Go ahead and increase the radius pretty high and make sure your angle's at 90 degrees. That way it goes straight up. And you can play around with the thinness if you want. I think something like a low setting works pretty well. I'll go ahead and click on OK. Now we have a nice blend for our flame there. Let's go to the glow layer. Let's set that to a screen composite method as well. And let's go ahead and select a bright red. We'll select the glow brush, and we'll go ahead and paint right around this area here just to make it glow a little bit. Let's return to the flame layer, and let's go ahead and create a mask. We'll select black and the airbrush, and we'll airbrush out a little bit of the base of this. I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and apply that layer mask by right-clicking on it and choosing Apply Layer Mask. I'm going to turn on Preserve Transparency and just add a little more of a hint of blue to the edge of this flame here. And then at this point, I think things are coming together pretty well, so I'm just gonna tighten up a few more details and try to bring this piece together. So I'm gonna go to the candle layer. I'm gonna use the airbrush to go ahead and just put in some more little details here around the wick. So the wick looks like it's kind of coming out of a hole. Let's go ahead and blur things a little bit just to make it look more realistic. I'm gonna go ahead and just save this by doing save as. It's always good to save copies of your artwork. And now if I go ahead and experiment and I mess something up, it's not the end of the world. I can always go back to that previous save. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and flatten all my layers. I'm gonna choose drop all layers. And I'm going to select the blur blender and I'm going to blur some of this wick. We don't want it to be so sharp. And I'm gonna blur the edges of this whole candle just a little bit. There's another quick and easy way to do this by duplicating this layer. So what you want to do is you want to do select all, and then you want to choose copy and paste. That creates a duplicate of your layers here. Turn off preserve transparency. We don't need that anymore. And on this duplicate layer, let's go to effects, focus, soften, and go ahead and blur this as much as you like because we can remove a little bit of the blur. We'll add a mask to that duplicate layer. We'll select black and the airbrush. And as you might have guessed, if we paint inside of our mask with black, it brings the focus back in. So you can do that in a few places just to kind of bring focus back into the piece. If you want to put the focus away, make it blurry again, just select white and paint with white. That'll put it out of focus. I think that looks pretty good for the focus. Let's go ahead and choose drop all layers to flatten all of our layers. And one last thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a new layer. I'll set it to multiply. I'm going to choose orange and I'm going to fill the canvas with orange. I'm going to choose OK and then I'm going to use the airbrush with white to go ahead and just paint away some of that so that we give everything just a little bit of an orange warm glow. Then I'm going to turn down the opacity of that layer. And if we do before and after, see it gives everything a little bit of warmth. We can also experiment with the overlay composite method too. 
It gives you kind of a more brighter effect. You can also try screen. That gives you kind of a different effect where everything is a lot brighter as well. And soft light. There's a lot of different options here. I think I kind of like soft light, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. I'm going to select drop all layers again, and there you go. We have a finished painting of a candle. If you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, I hope you'll join me every Tuesday for a new episode. If you go ahead and click that subscribe button, you'll get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.